Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Isaiah chapter 56 verses 6 through 7. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the beauty of your word. Thank you for the treasure of your word, God. Help it to blossom in us and bear much fruit, Lord God, so that we can be productive servants of you. We love you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we have a pretty interesting scripture from the Lord. I want to say we've done this one before. Um, Might have been a little while back, but let's go ahead and get started. So Isaiah 56, verse 6, And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, then something's going to happen, right? For those people that he's describing here, something's going to happen. And that's in the next verse. That is actually the, um, the, central focus scripture for today but verse six let's tackle this one first and it says and the foreigner who joins himself to the lord to minister to him, to him to love the name of the lord and to be his servant so we know that when we look at scriptures like this where we we can see some some application um in that present time with isaiah very little though it was more prophesying of the thousand year reign so this one is specifically uh more leaning toward the thousand year reign you can tell because it talks about um the ability of these people that they're talking about to sacrifice on the altar of the lord so we know that this is something that it would was will tr truly be fulfilled in the future so it says and the foreigners who join themselves to the lord who are those foreigners those foreigners are us we are the gentiles when they say the foreigner they're meaning anyone not being jewish anyone outside of that um hebrew covenant between um the israelites and god so it says and the foreigners who join themselves to the lord meaning that they want to follow in his ways they want to follow in his law um we say law here because that is their perspective um they 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 can only know in part, right, when they're prophesying. So as they speak, they're going to speak as it relates to the law and the covenant of God as they know it. So, but we know that um, Jesus came and fulfilled that law and and that, that covenant has become new, right? There's a new and greater, a better covenant um, between God and man especially as it relates to the foreigner, the Gentile. So it says, and the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, meaning us, um, to minister to him, meaning like to relate to him, to to bring offerings, to bring tithe, ministry, minister, meaning like having that communication there. Um, and we know that the only communication that the Gentiles have been able to really um really go in and be in the presence of God through is through Jesus, right? Because he is our covering. He is our sin offering. There was a place in the Jewish temple for the Gentiles, but it was in the outer kind of courts and, and not in these inner sanctums where the, the Jewish people were. So it says to love the name of the Lord and be his servant. So we're going to have that open communication, that ability to access the throne of God, access the presence of God, um, have a face to face, you know, with this God of the universe and, and not have to be ashamed, right? Like Isaiah, I'm a man of unclean lips. We don't have to worry about our sin um, as it relates to God anymore, because there is a covering, there is a, a future hope, and this is what they're talking about. So let's start from the beginning again. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to Him, and that join themselves, of course, what are we, what are we foreshadowing? A marriage, right, between the bride and the groom to join together. What what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. We are joining ourselves to the Lord. We are marrying 
bringing ourselves to the Lord. It says to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and be his servants. If you love him, then you'll do, right? If you love him, then you are, you're going to uh, follow his commands. You're going to work for him. You're going to serve him. It's the application of the love. It is the do of the love. So it says, you know, to love the name of the Lord um, and to be his servants. We are coming into an engrafting as the Gentiles and we have this ability to be heirs, right? To, to walk in wholeness, walk in fullness, rule from heavenly places just as a child, an actual child who had been born into the family, right? It is not as an adopted son. It is as a son, right? And and it has such a, a beautiful, um, a beautiful fulfillment that we might not even know until you know this actually comes so it says to be his servants to love the name of the lord and to be his servants remember faith without works is dead you can believe on the lord um and and you can um receive salvation but that salvation is is separate from the rewards that will come. Remember, um, you want to walk in the fullness of God. You want to abide in Christ. You want to show that love. You want to show the manifestation of of um of exactly how it is applied and how in how you live. So here it says to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Um, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant. So these are the people who are are going to receive this promise. Um, it says everyone who keeps the Sabbath, remember Jesus, it was the Lord over the Sabbath. He is the one who came to fulfill the law. He's the one who brought the better covenant. So here, remember Isaiah is, is speaking in a foreshadowing, I mean, in a... Um, a prophetic vein so he he only knows it from the law perspective but he knows that something greater is coming it says everyone who keeps the sabbath and does not profane it and how do we keep the sabbath first of all we keep the sabbath by keeping the sabbath right remembering the sabbath remembering on friday night that this is the lord's sabbath and and i've told you guys about just how god has kind of begun to deal with me um in the sabbath and and that is still there regardless of whether we observe it or not it's still there it still has a blessing on it from friday evening sundown till saturday evening sundown observing the sabbath and remembering it and keeping it holy it it doesn't say keeping it holy because it sounds good it says keeping it holy because this is a perpetual covenant this is something that continues on right god keeps that blessing on the sabbath now we can choose to you know do what man does which is celebrate the sabbath on sunday but that doesn't mean that it has the blessing that the the true sabbath carries that is something that man made up not god right so we still have to remember the sabbath and keep it holy it says everyone who keeps the sabbath and does not profane it now remember we are found in christ jesus jesus is the lord over the sabbath he is the new covenant he is he represents those things so when we're found in him we're covered right it, it the sabbath remember it, the sabbath is not necessarily as a sin when you don't um keep it and i don't really want to go there but the it, it has more to do with blessing you right it, it has to do with fulfilling and blessing you in your daily activities and 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 giving you energy giving you power giving you strength right it has more to do with blessing you than than a curse against you right so you want to fulfill and you want to keep the sabbath and not profane it right but it's for your own benefit so it says and holds fast my covenant meaning the the holding fast to your obligation to the Lord, right? What is your obligation to abide in Christ, right? Because we have this greater covenant. We have the good news of the gospel, which is that the, the law has been fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled it. And so it's all benefits from there, right? As long as you stay in Christ, abide in Christ, 
Christ walk in the light. It says, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant. So you have to hold fast. What does hold fast mean? Keep hold of it. Remember, remember, we've talked about this before, to remember. Not only are you remembering for yourself, you are remembering for future generations. You are telling others of Christ. You are telling your children of the covenant that you have between God. You are telling your your co-workers, the, the people you run into at the grocery store, you are holding fast. It is an active um an active thing in your life. It is an active um, um, goal that you're trying to reach every day is this kingdom mindset, right? Holding fast to the covenant, holding fast to that good news and actively remembering it on a daily basis. So all of these things are to say that these people are going to experience something, right? Experience some sort of goodness. So let's read it all together. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast to my covenant, these I will bring, verse seven, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. So this is also just um, a beautiful reflection of that thousand year reign, right? So it's saying that um, I will bring them to my holy mountain. We know that the the new Jerusalem um, will be on the mountain, right? And, and we've talked about what this will look like according to the book of Revelations. We have walked our way and talked our way through line by line and verse by verse in Revelation. The the beauty of what this um um what this is foreshadowing so it's that cube right that that one the cube and we talked about the measurements i can't think of them now but that this perfect cube that is going to take up this certain amount of space um there will be no temple per se in it because Jesus is the temple and then it will have the different layers of the foundation made out of the different um um stones and precious jewels precious stones I want to say it is and 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 the the pearl gates and the different gates which represent the tribes of Israel we talked about all these things I'll try to well I'll just say just look into the revelation teachings um and and it's there it says these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. So it's saying that these Gentiles, these people who are found in Christ, he's going to bring them to his holy mountain. And when he says the holy mountain, meaning the mountain of the Lord, the new Jerusalem, when it comes down to earth, the new earth. And it says, make them joyful in my house of prayer. And I love it's the fact that it says, make them joyful. Because remember, we were talking about, you know, sometimes you, you're you going to have to push yourself, right? To to be joyful and rejoice and be glad in the presence of God, um, rejoicing, meaning being having joy. But, you know, just depending on, you know, your life circumstance, but spending time in the presence of God automatically gives you a certain amount of joy, right? It's going to give you a certain amount, as long as you're in that right mindset and you're basking in his presence, you're going to get the residual glory. It's not even a residual. It is, you're going to experience the glory of God and experience joy, right? But here it is saying that he's going to make them joyful in his house of prayer, Meaning it's going to be some bliss in there, you guys. When we go to this mountain and when we go to rejoice, it is going to be such a great time. We're going to look forward to going to the mountain. We're going to look for It's like our pilgrimage, right? And and for some, they will go in and not come out according to the book of Revelation. So it's going to be this blissful state, this beautiful place to be. We're going to look forward to it. It is going to be considered his house of prayer. Remember, um, 
we want our houses to be a house of prayer now, even today. But he is saying here, th there's going to be this, this sanctuary, this not sanctuary, but there's going to be this place of communion and ministering um, on his mountain. And, and we're going to get to experience it. We don't have a, an understanding per se of it now. We can only talk about it, but we're going to actually be able to experience this. It says their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. So obviously there will be an ability to bring some sort of offering to him. There's going to be some ability to sacrifice and and we don't know if this is symbolic or if this is actual you know in animals I don't I don't believe that it is actual in animals but um uh, who knows we really don't know so when we get there where because this could just be from Isaiah's perspective of the burnt offering sacrifices you know and what he knows through the law but Either way, God is going to be there. We're going to be able to offer up our offerings, even if it's just of praise, we'll be able to do that. And it says we'll be accepted, meaning that he is going to receive that. There's not going to be a, a distinguishment of Jew and Gentile um, offering, right? This is going to be, this is going to be, hey, he accepts it, he receives it, and and he, he loves it, and we're going to be made joyful while we're there. So it says, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. This is going to be God's house, you guys. Remember, the gate will never close. It will always be open. It says, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all all people. There won't be any discrimination of Jew and Gentile, foreigner, Greek. There, There's not going to be poor or rich. It is for all people to go into. And I think that's just such a beautiful thing. We know that, you know, our rewards in heaven are, are basically based on uh, the work that we've done right on earth but this particular thing is going to be able to be experienced by all people going to this new jerusalem going up to the temple not the temple but the house of prayer of the lord right because remember there is no temple there he is the temple jesus is the temple he is also the light so all right you guys let's go ahead and pray lord jesus thank you for your word Thank you for the beauty and the richness of your word. We are about to experience this thing. It is so close right now. We don't even realize, and yet it is so close. We love you, Lord. We praise you. Help us to be participants in this new Jerusalem. Help us to be there offering sacrifices, experiencing the joy, um, and just, just enjoying you. And for some of us going in and not coming out, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. If there's anyone out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, so you can experience these things and uh, so much more, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than saying the words, believe them with all your heart um, as you confess them with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Cover my sins with your blood, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day. You are the Lord. You are my Lord. Sit on the throne of my heart. Lead me and guide me in all truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has entered you and, and sealed you into the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. Um, learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Sit down, ask questions, and, and, and wait for an answer. And that's a great way to learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Go out and be baptized in Jesus' name and go out and follow find other believers let the holy spirit lead you to find other believers um so that you can stay sharpened in his word so may the lord bless you and keep you may he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace take care